200年以上の歴史を持つ牧場地帯に彼の工房はあるその工房からハイテクノロジーによって最先端のデザインが生み出されている彼はまず初めてのベースを試作した頃から話を始めてくれた My interest in headless instruments evolved from this experience of making this product here. And what I found was that, and let me backtrack a second. I came from being a furniture designer, being a, a designer of chairs. And ergonomics are very important in that. That is the way a chair fits your body for comfort is very important. So this was kind of a bias that I took into my work on bases. A lot of the,、uh, the features of the curves and so on of this instrument are very much involved in making it comfortable. Now, I wanted an instrument that would balance, and you can see that this instrument balances quite well, but it's not easy to make a base that balances. And the reason is that this neck is very long, and now you have、uh, tuning hardware made out of metal, which is fairly heavy, on the end of this long neck,、It、tends to make the neck want to go down. The reason this instrument balances is because There's a, a weight placed in the very back end of the body here, which,、uh, as efficiently as possible, counterbalances the weight of the tuning machines here. Well, maybe you can begin to imagine how my mind worked. I said to myself, why do I have a weight here and a weight here in order to counterbalance that weight that's there? And it's, it suddenly flashed that there was no real reason why I couldn't take this, this tuning machines here. And place them on the body. And、uh, that led me into this first headless instrument that、uh, I guess I started work on in、um, 1977. It was 1987. And I, and I, was,、uh, I was working at a music store in Boston. And、uh, I, it was, they, ha- they had them in the store. And I,、uh, I just. I started、uh, as working part time there, and、uh, somebody wanted to. I was in a case, you know, and somebody wanted to try it, and I took it down for them to play, and they broke a string on it. And、uh, so I had to put a string, a new string on it. And that, otherwise, I would have never looked at the, I would have never paid any attention to the, to the tremolo mechanism that was on it. As far as I knew, until I took it out of the case and actually looked at it, it was just another tremolo, you know. And when I, when I had to、uh, change a string on it, I realized there was something else going on there than just you know, a standard Strat or Bigsby tremolo. And prior to that, actually, I had a Kaler. I had a Stratocaster with a Kaler on it. And uh, I, uh, I picked it up, and it was, the, it was the L series, which is the small black one. And,、uh, and I remember thinking that it was. It was absolutely not what I wanted in a guitar when I first picked it up because it, was, it wasn't wood. It didn't have a headstock. It went against, you know. And then, and then I put a new string on it and I started playing it and I became obsessed with it to the point where I, I actually、uh, took out a bank loan and bought it because I couldn't afford to buy it. So I got, I, and I, just, I had to have it. And I, I think that's the last time that, that that was the first time and the last time that ever happened to me with an instrument that I just had to have it, you know? And it took me a week and a half to figure out how. <laughs>